Our next guest on Smarter San Diego TV is one of our favorite guests here. Please welcome back to the show, former Navy SEAL, Andrew Paul. AP, what's up, man? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Great. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. Me too. So, big topic today. And we put this out. We did a poll on SmarterSanDiego.com. We'll talk about the results in just a second, Rebecca. Um, but you called me. We talked about this. There was a lot going on in the news. We sat down. We had a chat. And then almost immediately, I mean, within hours of that, big announcement was made that women are going to be allowed to become Navy SEALs. So what we decided to do was just do a poll on SmarterSanDiego.com and say, hey, should women be allowed to become Navy SEALs? And we got a lot of comments. Uh, a lot of people were saying a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring you on today because you were a Navy SEAL. Right. You know a little bit more than the rest of us do about how that organization works um, and whether or not this is something that makes sense. So from your perspective, should women be allowed to become Navy SEALs? The short answer is no. It's a mistake. And there's a lot of reasons why it's a mistake. And the issue really right now is it's a political one. Okay. This is not about equality, although it's being flown under the banner of equality for a political end. Mm -hmm. And the question really needs to be, is this going to enhance combat effectiveness? What's this going to really do for the SEAL teams? Does this make sense? My answer is no. And I think if you were to poll the vast majority of Navy SEALs, they also would say no. Okay. There's a handful at the very top whose promotion is tied to politics. Yeah. And so they say yes right now. Gotcha. Now, there were some people who said uh, on social media that, hey, if, if, they can, if a woman can pass buds, if they can get through, mm -hmm. then they should be allowed to become a SEAL. What do you think about that? Well, that sounds like a good idea. It seems innocuous enough. Hey, if they can do all of the same things, why shouldn't they? That's a fair point. But becoming a good Navy SEAL is more than just making it through buds. And, and one of the challenges that I have is that the public sees BUDS, Basic Underwater Demolition or SEAL teams, uh, SEAL training as that's what it takes to be a SEAL. That's just one component. And BUDS is not just like the ultimate Tough Mudder or Spartan race and if you make <laughs> it through, you're a Navy SEAL. Okay. It's way more than that. It's not just making it through. There's lots of guys who make it through and they are, they're bad SEALs. They're not good teammates. They're not brothers. And that dynamic is extremely important. So it's not enough just to say, hey, is there a woman tough enough? There very well may be a woman tough enough. Question is, is that going to enhance the combat effectiveness of a platoon at the combat level? And you don't think so? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, what about, um, you said it's not about equality. What, can you elaborate on that, what you mean? Sure. Because I know it's, it, there's politics involved, obviously, anything involved with government right. and you know, now the military, politics are involved. But specifically, what do you mean by this isn't an equality issue? Do you have proof of that? Sure. Well, absolutely. It, it exists already in the doctrine and the standards that, that we have today. The Secretary of the Navy says, well, if a woman is strong enough to make it through, she should be able to do it. Well, how about this? How about if I'm 50 years old and I'm strong enough to make it through? Should I be able to do it? We have age limitations. Mm. So, okay, so we're going to allow women in, and so we won't discriminate based on gender, but we'll continue to discriminate based on age. That's what he's saying. Unless it's going to open up to anybody now who's strong enough to make it through. However, it, it goes deeper than that. We already have inequality standards in the military. Men and women are, in the military are promoted in part on their physical readiness. So, for example, part of your promotion, part of your, your rating and part of your advancement has to do with your physical readiness, how fast you can run, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, things like that. And there's a dissimilar standard. Men have to run a mile and a half faster than a woman to get the same maximum score to max out the PRT or in the Army, the PFA, things like that. This dissimilar standard exists across the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps. And so men and women are promoted in part based on physical readiness and men are held to a higher standard than women. So if we really care about equality, why don't we just start right there with the very basics and make the same physical readiness test for both men and women? I mean, if I really want to be kind of a wimp about it, I could go back and say, well, maybe I missed promotional opportunities because I had because a woman scored higher on the test but did less push-ups than me. Yeah. Do you think that BUDS or the SEAL training is going to become easier? In other words, are they going to change some of the exercises or some of the standards to make it easier for a woman to potentially become a SEAL? The challenge right now is that nobody believes that the standard won't be lowered. Nobody thinks that. Correct. 
except for the people at the top who have to answer for their jobs. And they swear that the, that the standards won't be dropped, but nobody within the community believes that the standard is going to be maintained. Who I really feel bad for are those guys who are running training. The pressure on these young men who are incredible athletes, incredible SEALs, setting the example in the SEAL community and, and, and ushering in that next generation of SEALs, the pressure on them to answer for why a woman doesn't make it, I mean, that's who I really feel bad for in this. They are caught right in the crosshairs of this political fight. Wow. Wow. Never even thought about that aspect and that dynamic mm -hmm. of it. Um, Rebecca, let's hear from a couple people on social media. Uh, we asked the question. We did the poll. Um, actually, let's talk about the poll results first. Yes. Go ahead and give us the results of the poll. The poll, should women be allowed to become Navy SEALs? 87% of people say no. 87% of people said no. 13% said yes. Yes. Yep. We actually threw in a third answer, who cares, and no one, no one said who cares. Right. It's a big but deal. Even still, so 87% say yes and 13% say no. I would even question, however, oh, let's ask the public what they think. And yet they know nothing about the Navy SEAL teams or what it takes to be a, an effective combatant, right? Right. That, but anyway. Yeah, well, that's 87% you know. said no, they shouldn't be allowed to become Navy SEALs. What were some of the comments, Rebecca, that we got? Uh, well, we have Edward Valencia here. He says no as well. Uh, they'll put other SEALs in danger protecting them. Military men are very proud and would do just about anything to help or save a woman. What do you think about that, Andrew? Is that true? Is that part of the problem that you have with it? No, I, I think it just, there's a certain brotherhood, there's a certain dynamic. One of the special traits about the unique aspects of it, anybody who's played a team sport knows when a team is firing on all cylinders, there's a special dynamic amongst the team players. And nowhere in my life have I ever seen this epitomized in a greater way than in the SEAL teams. The brotherhood is incredible. And there's a special dynamic. There are things that are said and done behind closed doors in the safe context of a brotherhood that is going to become inappropriate. Now you got to worry about sexual harassment and the way guys act around guys because now we're introducing women. It, it's, it's going to fracture the dynamic. And that dynamic is one of the most special aspects about the SEAL teams and why they're so effective at accomplishing the mission that they do. Is that part of, um, is that part of your feeling on this, is that, hey, we've already got something that's working here. Where I come from, we say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Um, is that kind of your feeling on it as well? Absolutely. I, we have arguably one of the most elite, most effective fighting forces in the history of mankind. Now, I'm not just single, singling out the SEAL teams here. There are other incredible uh, special forces units in the military as well that are sharing the same plight as the SEAL teams in this particular case. Why are we going to mess with that? One of the arguments is, is that women don't have the same advancement opportunity because if a man goes to combat and, and he's in combat and he performs well and he gets a bronze star or a silver star or a medal of honor, in other words, he, he has the opportunity to die for his country and, and he comes back a hero, he's then promoted and that's the guy who's going to make general or admiral or something like that. Women don't have that same opportunity to die for their country or perform in a heroic manner that may allow them to advance in the same way. That's, that's one argument. Okay, so if you really want to do that, then go ahead and go, why don't you go field an all-female special forces team? I like why that. Why don't you go create an all-female team? I like it, that. Let's train, equip them, put all the same resources behind them, access to the same you know, technology and, and the best of the equipment that our country has to offer and create a special unit with all women, for example. But why are we going to go mess with this organization that has already proven itself time and time again in battle? Why are we going to mess with that? Yeah, it's tough to say that that makes I love that as a solution, though, because then you're not just talking about one or two women who can make it through BUDS. You can create a whole new standard, create sure. a whole new purpose, a team that's designed for a certain type of missions. Right. Um, you, could, you could really do something there that would make right. a lot of sense, and you would allow a lot more women to be a part of that. Right. Um, I really like that as a solution. I'll tell you what, man. You get all those women together certain times of the year, man, Al-Qaeda and ISIS would wish we didn't release those women against them, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Might have to cut that part out. <laughs> no, I think it's funny. Now, because uh, we're all, it's, it's, we're joking, you know, at that point yeah. in time. I mean, what we're looking at here is looking at, you know, the, the dynamic of the difference between men and women. Obviously, there is one. Um, at this point in time, women already play a very important role, don't they, in right. combat operations of even the SEAL teams. Right. And maybe the public isn't aware of that, but women actually are already well employed in the SEAL community to the extent that it enhances combat effectiveness. For example, over in Iraq and Afghanistan where you have a culturally sensitive 
culture. Mm -hmm. And you know, we go on target and you know, we detain men and women and we need to search them, make sure they don't have weapons or contraband or explosives or other things. We use women to search the other women so that we don't offend the male populace that now here come our male soldiers groping, obviously not groping, but you know, touching these women to search them. So you bring in female detainee handlers. That just makes sense, right? And there are other cases and in interviews and situations where women have demonstrated doing a better job than men. So we, women are already well employed within the SEAL community and other special forces units as well. So to suggest that women are not involved in the SEAL teams or don't have the same kind of opportunity to serve, deploy, and die for their country is simply not true. Great stuff, Andrew Paul. Thank you so much for coming today and talking about this very controversial topic. I love yeah. your idea, and I hope that they, they, I hope someone's watching and pays attention to that because <laughs> that's a really, really good suggestion. Thanks so much for your time. All right, good to see you. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. Commercial free. <laughs>